Um, next we have Mr. Baba Bob Shipman. He is a longtime community activist in Philadelphia and he's involved with various organizations in the city. Uh, Baba Bob Shipman was born and raised in Philadelphia and attended college both in the area and across the country. He has dedicated his life to assisting the community and uplifting the quality of life of all Americans. Baba Bob has served in many capacities. His signature tenure, serving as a community organizer for the Institute, of, for, the Institute for the Study of Civic Values. During this service period, he mentored the Welfare to Work community and has built a group consisting of 4,000 members who exchange resources. Um, the needs of the neighborhood from Bob's perspective is that talk is designed to remind the audience of the everyday basic needs of the community at large that are being taken for granted. The constant requests from friends, neighbors, and families that are sometimes not handled in a timely manner. With the economy in a turmoil today, the cost of basic services continue to rise and needs being strained, having a network to access becomes life-saving. So let me introduce to you Mr. Baba Bob Shipman, and I will be on standby just in case you need me. I appreciate you. <laughs> you are quite Thank welcome. You. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being here. I have to admit, I tried everything in my power not to get up front and speak to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, standing a group kind of let that go over the head. I'm 59 years young. And I started working in the community with model cities. Raymond Rosen Projects, uh, 25th and Diamond. Uh, back in 19, I don't say the year, but it's uh, in the 60s, 70s, day camps and uh, others. And mentoring people like um, Bernard Hopkins and my day camp, Dawn Staley, and a lot of the mall and recreation and NBA stars. Um, I've been involved in the community for a long time, and five years ago, as a social worker, community organizer at the Institute for the Study of Civic Value, I was honored to be mentored by Dr. Edward Swartz. And one day I came in and my voice was hoarse. And it got worse and worse and worse. We had excellent medical insurance then. Now, 2005 or so, and uh, we found that there was nerve damage between, I mean, I went through all types of studies, and finally a specialist found that there's a breakage somewhere between the, the neurological and the, the vocal cord network, and um, it's called a spasmatic dysphonia. And of course, I did research on it and found out that Dilbert, the cartoonist, also has spasmodic dysphonia. John Robert Shipman, I'm Shipman. I had three generations living, my grandchildren as well, but my name, but uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. has spasmodic dysphonia. There's 50,000 of us, and it's growing across the nation. So I was able to get to a, a voice therapist and some other medical teams that deals with that type, these types of issues, and I was able to start getting Botox injections. Meanwhile, I was meeting daily with 50 groups and classes across the city with the, the my assignment with ISCV, the Institute for the Study of Civic Value, was to um, identify resources for the welfare to work community. And that became the area centers. You know, Arbor, People for People, and a lot of them are gone now. It's only six left, so I stay close to those families. But I was losing my voice. And I tried everything. I 
brought some tools with me. I, I went and hot to get all types of voice assistance technology. But the Botox was weakening my vocal cords so badly that I couldn't speak at all. I was babbling really, really, really bad. With the combination with the medication, and I became almost 300 pounds. So, to make a long story short, information and resources was really important for me. The type of network that we're trying to pull together here. I just wanted to say and refer to my notes that my interest in building the IA network is a selfish one. I realize I only have 50 more years to do what I've been doing. No, on a more serious note, I want to leave a legacy. One of being a founding member of a large, secure, safe, trusted network that could conceivably expand citywide, state, nationally, and internationally, because the need is there. While working with the welfare to work population, I started to develop a Yahoo uh, email list similar to Philly Box. In fact, Ed was at Philly Box, and I was having the parent partners, and we were recruiting uh, for both uh, groups. And many of you received parent partner. I see Teresa shaking and uh, receiving Alicia are uh, receiving the Daily Digest where resources, agencies, as well as individuals uh, send in information and it goes out on housing, legal, uh, medical, you name it, it, it comes in and goes out. We don't have as much dialogue as Philly Box, however, and I think <laughs> we have to start focusing on building on that. We all know that what time it is. The changes to weather, economy, parenting, and consumerism and more. We all know the stats. We have heard them day in and day out. With the coming election cycle, we will be reminded over and over about the economy and about the issues that are out there. I plan to be a part of the solution. One that brings people together, helps the common man and woman, a solution that does not take money to build. The AI network will bring opportunities to assess business folks. We live near nonprofits, religious institutions, and families. My personal reasons include ensuring my grandchildren and great grandchildren will survive and have a surefire of efficient network of trusted individuals to get information and referrals from including a process for each of you in your time of need. When a family has a trouble meeting their basic needs like food, shelter, they can't even think about things like saving for the future. We're aware that thousands of working families and individuals in our community struggle monthly with paying rent, buying groceries, and keeping utilities connected, among other things. I get individual Facebook, Twitter, personal emails, texts, with all types of emergency requests. Anywhere from 25 to 75 requests a week. So I'm sending them out. I get over 400 emails on five different email accounts. I need a network. The community I serve desperately needs this network. My dream 
for the IA network of providing basic needs and services. As IAs, we will assist the community. Again, we're still developing. This is me talking, not the firm mission of the group. IAs will assist the community by identifying sources to meet a variety of everyday needs for our members, one-on-one -on -one assistance with issues, especially with the voter ID, birth certificate and identification location assistance, emergency transportation, employment assistance locating with employment listings, job searches, resumes and job applications. The network could assist in identifying and referring folks to poor housing assistance, provides housing department listings to help with applications. Also with community referrals. Appropriate community referrals are made for food, food, clothing, substance abuse treatment, medical issues, and other basic needs. People such as Jay and Stan, computer lab locations, the key spots, coordination of services, referrals are made for alcohol and substance abuse screenings. Services could be made and coordinated for long and short term <coughs> housing and medical needs, seniors as well as from youth to, to the elderly. Also community involvement. We can help outreach representatives. There are opportunities to meet with representatives of organizations including, example, Department of Veteran Affairs, the Veterans Unemployment statistics are higher than a national rate and even higher for those 21 from 18 to 21 that are vets and even higher than that for the female veterans. Mental health services, I'll see Ms. Frida here, legal services, healing centers, organizations like CARES, health care for the homeless, social work interns could be involved. We could also refer and help with Social Security and SSI income and supplement that saving my life. Uh, legal clinics. We could offer opportunity to discuss uh, emergency needs, ongoing needs, seasonal needs. Demands for services are increasing every day and more and more organizations are competing for the same dollars. This persuaded us to examine and develop a more creative approach to answer the growing demand. Thus, you are possibly members, founding members of the Information Advocates Network. Now is the time to make decisions with greater intention and even stronger sense of purpose. We can help consumers avoid costly mistakes. The IA network will help you find anything. Whether you need a local caterer or a housekeeper, a used couch or a landlord, you ask and we will assist in finding offers from people nearby. I imagine over 400,000 members using IAs to find trustworthy people and businesses providing hundreds of services and goods, both new and used. <coughs> Do you know anyone that could benefit from a project like this? Me. Do you? <laughs> okay. How would you feel when you connected to connect people to the services they need? Very good. How could you benefit? Please learn more about our mission and join us in building this project. Thank you. I need you and your members.
how do you guys think Bob did? <laughs> I just want to mention, just kind of piggybacking a little bit off of um, what Bob said about his struggles with his voice. I worked as a support coordinator in Bucks County for about three years and um, for a few months here in Philadelphia. And my background is in working with people um, and families uh, with disabilities, particularly um, uh, developmental disabilities from physical disabilities, and more recently now um, in the mental health field. And I can tell you that um, one of my greatest concerns now that I, I really believe um, information can help with is I am concerned about families who have <clears throat> special needs um, children, um, whether they're, they're recently diagnosed and they're about two, or whether they're turning 50 this year and they have parents who are 70, um, 80, struggling um, to care for their adult children. Um, it's, it's frightening. Um, so keep that in mind when you continue to go through this conference and you are listening to um, our speakers and um, just kind of ingesting this concept that we are trying to um, bring some solidification to. Keep these things in mind. Um, if, you, if your life is touched um, by having someone um, in your home that has a disability, um, or whether you know someone um, who has a family member with a disability, it can be crucial um, to getting them the support that they, the grassroots support that they could actually get through information advocacy. One of the things that I think about um, when I talk about it is. We all know what the internet is and how it's, um, it's technology and it reaches out to many people who can access it. I kind of think of information advocates as um, a human internet, um, a way to um, have people do the kinds of things that you would normally be able to do just with a couple of keystrokes. So I just wanted to put that out there. I do have an uncle who is special needs. I also have a five-year-old. Um, niece who has special needs and I can tell you her parents work extremely hard um, just to keep their jobs, to keep their marriage together and um, to manage their two children. The oldest one who is five is special needs and the youngest one is about three and you know three year olds have so much energy. Um, so I just wanted you guys to keep that in mind um, that we um, can also be a very um, great resource, a source of strength and comfort to families who are um, raising uh, loved ones with uh, disabilities. Okay, so our next speaker is Mr. Daniel Schiffner. He is the library coordinator. Daniel, where are you? Are you here? Okay. Okay, so our next speaker is on this wing in. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so we're going to take in one minute about a 10 minute break. Yes. I just wanted to say um, this is my first time in the room. I'm not familiar with everybody here because we have some extra time. Maybe we can kind of go around the room, everybody can introduce themselves. Sure. We have um, to do a 10 minute break because our next speaker is on his way. Um, so, do you guys just want to, do you want to start here? Um, just introduce yourself and just say maybe where you're from. Sure. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Andy Sharp. I'm the Communications Director at the Delaware Valley Association of Rail Passengers, and I'm also the Development News Editor at Flying Kite Magazine. Okay, thank you. Sure. Hi, I'm Sharon Tomlin, and um, I have, I, I belong to three organizations that I think could benefit from the information I'm getting. Sorry? You want to stand up for everybody? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm Sharon Tomlin, and I was just thinking of here out of curiosity, really. And we wanted to three organizations that I think could benefit from the kind of information here. And one of them is I live in a high rise apartment over here in Center City. And many of the people are um, getting up in years, they've been there for quite a while. Another organization, the Friends, the Quaker Friends, are right now starting an organization called uh, The Friends in the City to help people who are aging and want to stay in the city and stay in their homes. So in other words, age in place, and setting up networks for that. And the other one is, I'm a member of the First Unitary Church here, and we have a, here in the city, and we have a social justice interest, and I thought that was another way to go. And my 
you know, and this through the church is tutoring, reading, and training tutors and recruiting tutors 